Today, apparently I'm gonna be working on my tractor. I've been trying to get the palmettos up out of the backyard like it was in the last video, and I noticed that I've got a small leak up from the hydraulics down here at the quick attach system. This is a pretty cool system that Kubota has for the hydraulics. It just, it's just the one uh, connection that connects everything all at the same time. Really quick and easy. Same thing with the front end loader. Uh, this is the first time I've ever taken the front end loader off and I had a problem with the, the leg stand, the stands that come down that drop behind the bucket to stand it up so that you can back out of it. They wouldn't come down and I probably messed with it for like 30 minutes trying to get it loose. And then all of a sudden I walked away from it and they just dropped. Uh, apparently that's a grease issue <laughs> and they were just uh, binding up there. But anyway, that's done. I'm gonna take a look at this connection for the hydraulics. It, it appears to be actually leaking from every one of the lines or at least three of the four lines from underneath. So I don't know if this is something I'm gonna need to take it back. It's still under warranty. I've seen a lot of people have had this issue with this uh, front end loader, this new attachment system. So. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna take everything off, see if anything needs to be tightened up and wipe everything off with some alcohol and see if there's any grime or anything in there. Hopefully it's something very simple and then we'll connect it back and see how it goes. So I can see here that the front is nice and tight and the back, I mean, I've got a good sixteenth of space here in the back. It definitely looks like it's not seating all the way there, and that would explain why it's leaking from these back three, but not from the front one. Because you can see, I mean, if you look at how close that is right there versus that, that's a big difference. As you can see, whenever I reconnected it, I had to manually do it. Uh, there's something not right there. I've got to figure out what the deal is there. The connection for the hydraulic lines still looks wonky. I'm going to use it back here and do a little bit of digging and see if there's any leaking. And if there is, I'm probably just going to have to take it to the dealer and see what the deal is there. Those drips right there tell me that in fact that did not <laughs> fix the leak. I shall have to delve into that issue later for now. I went to the store to the gas station and got some uh, fuel, some diesel for the tractor and some regular fuel. If you don't do this, what you should do, I would recommend, it works out really good for us because we live in a hurricane prone area. So I keep like 30 gallons of gas at all times. And this is the, this is the first time I've had anything that used diesel. So I got this uh, diesel uh, gas can the other day. And speaking of which, I use these no spill. You know, when the government mandated that you had, that they had to use these, these uh, stupid, uh, fillers on these gas cans to prevent spilling, which causes you to spill every time. I love these right here. Um, I think they're about 35 bucks. I'll put a link if I can find a link for them, but I use these all the time. But for our regular fuel, what I do is I just make sure that I buy high octane so that I can use it on any of the cars. And then you try to make sure you get uh, no ethanol added fuel and put fuel stabilizer in it and then I'll rotate it out after like six months if I haven't used some I'll just make sure that I go back before I put any gas in the car or anything I'll use one of those um, containers and fill the car up and then refill the container instead of refilling the car that way I make sure that I keep it fresh uh, like I said for us in a hurricane area it works out really well to have some extra fuel in case we have to leave but with the way things are with the world right now you never know something strange could happen and you not have access to fuel you know, for a few days or whatever, and you don't want to be stuck like that waiting in a line, so. But whenever I was doing this, whenever I was filling these up, it got me thinking. 
that I really needed to pay attention whenever I was filling both of these up because I filled up the diesel and the gas at the same time at the pumps that were next to each other. And I thought, man, don't screw this up because while I'm thinking about gas, I got to thinking about the silent but deadly killer, the brain fart. How many people have died from brain farts? How many people have been injured from brain farts? Because unlike in its traditional format, the brain fart can make you uncomfortable as opposed to those around you. It would be very easy to ruin this tractor by having a brain fart and picking up the regular gasoline tank and filling up the tractor and just going ahead and ruin it for me real quick. See this dent? Lovely, isn't it? Runs all the way from here to here. This truck's a 2008 with only 56,000 miles on it. Brain fart caused this. I was at a client's house several years back and we were delivering cabinets and I was outside waiting while my nephew ran in and did something and a car pulled up behind me on the road and I thought, well, I'll pull over just a little bit and get out of his way. Well, sure thing, he wanted to go right exactly where I was. So I thought, all right, fine, I'll just pull over on the grass. And as I pulled on the grass, this person had four by four posts stuck in the ground to keep people off of their grass, but Ingeniously, they had painted them green to match their grass. So I didn't see them and I just drug that four by four post right down the side of the truck. So don't get in a hurry and don't get flustered by somebody else rushing you because this happens. Anytime you're working around like heavy equipment or tools, Basically, those are the times when you could die or you could lose a limb or a finger. A guy I worked with many years ago was routing a piece of wood one time and he was running the wood across it and he just ran his hand right across it and just routed right into the center of his hand, which I think probably felt really incredible. Now, some people would call that a momentary lapse of judgment, but don't be that guy, okay? <laughs> Let's call it what it is. It's a brain fart. We've all seen videos online of people blowing their holes in their legs and whatnot. You know, if you use a lead dispenser or carry a lead dispenser, then you should be most careful of all because basically it kind of works the same way with tools. If you don't fear it just a little bit, you get so comfortable with it that that's when you lose a finger or an artery. My dad was cutting a four by eight sheet of plywood on a contractor saw one time and a guy that we know came up who was crazy, good heart, but crazy. And he comes up and he goes, hey, Dick, what are you doing? You're not nothing. That's the way he talked. And my dad just runs his finger right into the table saw blade. My dad goes and gets stitches, comes back, finishes the job like a man. That's just the kind of stock I'm built from. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Also, this shop, this garage, looks like a bomb blew up. I gotta get this fixed. I wonder how many people have lost a thumb on a chop saw. Or worse yet, gotten really hungry and had a hot dog from a convenience store. Storm, is it pretty? Good girl. Have it left, left, yes, you missed. And speaking of Malinois, watch where you leave your favorite hat, my brand new hat. And I laid it down because I had a brain fart and forgot I had a Malinois. Don't do that. You think you know fear, but you don't know fear until you've been working on your computer for 30 minutes and realize you haven't seen your Malinois puppy in 10 minutes. On a serious note, can you be serious when you're talking about brain farts? I don't know, but I'm gonna try here. A woman, an elderly woman, a few years back, not too far from here, died in a drive-through at pharmacy when they were handing her her medicine and it dropped between her car and the wall. She opened her door to try to reach down and grab it. The car moved forward and she was crushed between her car and the wall of the pharmacy and the drive through That all comes back to when you get in a hurry, uh, you lose focus. And I myself am pretty bad about that sometimes, especially when I'm trying to film because I want to get something done. I've got too much to do and not enough time. But you really need to slow down and focus on what you're doing. Okay, I'm about done with this PSA. I've got palmettos to dig up, a tractor to fix, a garden to get in the ground. But one last thing, don't ever, 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 make a cut with your knife towards yourself or your thumb. Do you know how often I see people making cuts like this and all it takes, you're putting so much pressure down, all it takes is to slice your thumb off. 
Sadly, I must use my father as another example of this. When he was using a box cutter and he almost cut his thumb off. He still has his thumb. They reattached it. But anyway, sorry to have to using you for all these examples. I love you. See you next time.